Hey, I'm Luke. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Church Toolbox. This is going to be a resource that helps you, uh, whether you're a church worker, leader, volunteer, or just a church creative. Uh, this is something for you. So I'm going to bring today a just an idea, a thought. I uh, don't have it fully fleshed out, but I'm going to kind of open the conversation up, start with some of my thoughts, and see where we go from there. I want to talk about particularly threads. Now, we've seen a shakeup when it comes to threads and Twitter, now X. Um, so Instagram launched threads, Elon Musk bought Twitter. Both platforms have seen some level of volatility at the time of this recording, or I think four months into threads and six months into Elon's Twitter takeover. Again, I'm not totally sure. I haven't fully fleshed out this idea or done a ton of, I don't have like statistics and data and all this for you, but um, just from what I've seen and some of my experience, both on my personal side and in working with churches, here's some thoughts. So. If you're not aware, Twitter is kind of seeing some interesting changes in advertisers. There's a lot of negativity on the news. Used to be a very popular platform. Still remains popular in some circles, but things have changed. Threads was produced by Instagram. It's their Twitter alternative. It didn't see a lot of traction in the beginning. It kind of spiked, took off. Everybody was using it and then realized it wasn't as fun as Instagram and stopped using it. And now we've kind of seen another wave of use surge on there. Um, and the interesting thing I'm noticing about both of these platforms, there's some similarities and let's, let's jump to the chase. Should your church be on threads or, or Twitter? My answer would be yes. If you feel like that's where your audience lives. So it would be hard. It'd be hard for me to find a reason not to engage with these platforms. And here's why, here's what I'm seeing. Um, people are using the platforms regardless, like, they wouldn't exist if people weren't using People are using them, and your church should be reaching people everywhere, right? Secondly, um, it's a little bit of a different engagement. It's a different delivery system than some other video. And sometimes where our platforms right now are very photo and video-based, threads and Twitter, text-based platforms have a little bit more personality. It's easier to get a little bit more fun and flexible on there. I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. And then thirdly, um, it's very easy to produce content for this. So I'm thinking in the context of a church, you have a sermon that's preached, you have scripture references that are mentioned in that sermon, just post a couple of scriptures a week. There's an easy post right there. But then let's go a little deeper, get the transcription of the sermon or the sermon notes, and pull some nuggets out of there and post things like five things we learned this week about faith. Uh, you know, probably don't do more than five. I was going to say 10, but probably do five or three ways to deal with anger in frustrating situations and, and reference the sermon. So those are two very easy, low hanging ways to engage people on threads and Twitter. So again, I go back to it's, it's hard to find reasons not to use those things. And I know I'm speaking to people that are lead teams that are stretched thin already. Um, you're already very, um, like doing a lot. Um, and so you're saying, oh yeah, you're saying it's low hanging fruit and it's not that hard, but you don't understand what all we're doing. No, I get it. Like I, I, I'm there I, I, in the same boat with you, but it's very simple ways to engage. Um, so don't, don't burn out over using Twitter or threads. I don't think it's worth running the risk of burnout, but I'm also arguing that I don't think you're going to come close to burnout by adding that to your workflow. Um, the other thing, and this may be interesting to kind of wrap your head around. You may have heard about Wendy's. If you have time, just take a moment from this episode and, and after you're done and just Google Wendy's uh, social media strategy or Wendy's social media manager. They have been absolutely incredible on, on Twitter, depending on who you ask, right? So for years, Wendy's has led the game when it comes to engaging people in their fan base, enga engaging people online. And the way they approach it is they almost t treat their Twitter version of Wendy's like an unhinged social media manager. It's almost like there's someone, it's almost like an intern that is about to be fired, but they're related to somebody high up in the company. I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying this is how their social media reads sometimes. They intern that can't ever be fired and is a little bit unhinged and no one can do anything about it. They post absolutely ridiculous stuff and it's all with the you know mindset or the desire to engage people with Wendy's. Another thing that I see on threads, similarly, Microsoft has jumped in and they have kind of put out a persona that's, I won't say it's unhinged, but it's a little more loose. It's a little more, they're, they're trying to be, 
it almost feels like your uncle who shows up to Thanksgiving when his hair is dyed black and you know it, or he's wearing a bad toupee and he's wearing a leather jacket and he's trying to dress 10 years younger. That's kind of the persona that Microsoft is giving right now on threads. Is it right? Is it good? I don't know, but I'm noticing that What's happening? People are engaging with these platforms for better, or for worse, whether the brand is being tarnished on some level, what they're setting out to do is being accomplished right now on their YouTube channels, on their websites, everything is professional. They're going by their brand guidelines, but what's happening is on threads and Twitter or X is people are embracing these alternative personas and portraying them. Let's translate to that to church context. How do you do that? Do you do that? Do you, do you create an unhinged persona for threads or, or X? I would say no, but what I'm noticing is that you have more freedom to be a person. So give your church some identity, use slang, use catchphrases, use real humans, like act like you're a real person on threads and X, right? For your church. So your church might post something about an event. And instead of saying like, we invite you to participate this Sunday in our potluck for the nation's gathering, you would say like, yo, I'm fixing to tear up some Korean barbecue at this national international potluck. Anyone with me? Raise hand emoji. So you don't see this is just shift there, right? We've gone from this very stiff, very boring, um, you know, sister Carol graciously invites you to join in on our potluck to now, like you have become the kind of awkward youth pastor embracing that persona. I would say stick with one persona. Don't be schizophrenic on threads or X, right? Have one kind of um, note, one kind of person and use that person. So you may use a 23 year old female. How would that person talk on threads, right? And give your church an identity doesn't have to translate to every platform. Doesn't have to say like, we should sound the same on Facebook, sound the same on threads, sound the same on X, sound the same on YouTube. No, I'm noticing, and again, just my thoughts, right? You're just capturing Luke's thoughts here. This is just something to play with on threads. I'm noticing more of a casual conversational style rather than super formal and brand, guide, brand guidelines, this and that all the way up and down. So it's just a thought, hope that helps. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree, disagree? What are you seeing out there? What are you seeing churches do? What is working for your church? What is working for your friends that are in this space? I would love to know. Again, I'm not coming here with all the answers. Here's how to approach it. I'm more saying like, hey, here's a thought. What do you think? So let's engage. Let's have a conversation about it. Find me online um, on YouTube. Engage in the comments there. would love if you subscribe, download, share this podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. And then engage with my team over on my website, digitalchurch.co. There's free resources there. If you need to update your Twitter icon on your church website, I've got the new one in a social media icon pack. You're free to download that for free, free 99. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode of the Digital Church Toolbox podcast. Thanks for watching, listening, subscribing.